Hey guys, before we start off this video, I just want to give a quick special thanks to the team over at this plate for saying us these sick looking plates that you see back here. They're like poster frames in case you're unfamiliar who this plate are. They sell these awesome metal frame canvases which allow you to install on pretty much any surface, any wall in a matter of minutes. They cause no harm to the wall because there's no drilling or anything is required. It literally just sticks on your wall and it's held together magnetically. This allows you to switch between those plates with different ones later on in the future because if you take a look at their website, they have a variety of different selections, different styles you can choose from. So there's always going to be a design that suits everybody's personality. If you'd like to find out more about this plate, I'll be sure to include a link in the video description down below as well as where you can find this design that I have in the background. Also, be sure to stay tuned because we got some exclusive deals for my viewers coming out very soon. So Apple's trackpad. It's a really nifty device that really does give your finger a lot more real estate space. You may bundle this with an iMac or buy this separately for not just your MacBook Pro or something, but Thanks to the recent update support for iPad OS, iPad OS 13.4 was when they introduced it. But when you have these two devices paired, the trackpad gives you a lot of useful functionalities over the Magic Mouse and a standard Bluetooth mouse. So in this video, I'm gonna go ahead and cover pretty much everything you could do with the trackpad, as well as the newly discovered features that nobody else has covered. So I'm gonna be showing you those and a couple other awesome tips and tricks. So if you have the Apple trackpad, or you plan on picking one up later on for your iPad. Basically, this is the complete guide of everything you could do with it. Let's go ahead and begin. So, real quick, I'm gonna go ahead and start off this video with the basics and work our way up to the less unknown features. This way, we can make sure that everybody's on the same page. So, the most important step. There's two ways to pair the trackpad. The first way is by making sure that the trackpad is in its on position on the switch. Then just hop into your iPad settings in Bluetooth and underneath where Bluetooth Discover devices usually pop up, it should pop up saying trackpad. Tap on it, let it pair and you're set. The second method to connect the trackpad is with a USB-C to lightning cable. Now keep in mind this only works if your device has a USB-C port like the iPad Pros, but by simply plugging in the two devices like this, you don't have to have the Bluetooth on to do this. This is a great method if you're trying to borrow somebody else's trackpad so you don't have to pair it to your personal device. Using two fingers, you could actually slide left to bring up your widget page or slide it right to hide it. Then enabling the battery life tab on a widget page allows you to see the battery life percentage of the trackpad. If you haven't enabled it, just scroll down, tap the edit sheet, then just scroll down to where you see battery, tap the green plus icon, and you can rearrange it anywhere you want. If you don't have the widget tab enabled, simply follow the on-screen guide to help you take you to this page and just make sure the more app icon is checkmarked. The home button can be accessed by using three or four fingers by swiping down to top. Using the cursor, you can also highlight the home button and click on it. You may also click and drag it up to exit and close out of any app. Then the other final method is use the cursor, go down and slide down once more and it will quickly take you to the home page. So in case you didn't see that, again, cursor, down, slide down one more time and boom. Highlighting the home indicator, but instead of releasing all the way up, if you hold it midway, we'll quickly launch the multitask menu. Using three or four fingers, but pinching outwards, we'll also launch the multitask menu. Using four or three fingers, but pinching in, we'll quickly close it. Inside an application, if you use three or four fingers with pinch out, we'll also close the app. Notifications can be accessed in two different ways. First method is by clicking on the left corner where the time and date is, click on it and that will launch your notifications. You may also, instead of clicking, just slide one more time into the corner, it will launch the notifications automatically. Method number three, bring the cursor in the center and slide up, slide up one more time, it will bring it down. You could do this in an application as well. Control center, very similar thing, but the opposite. On the right side corner, by highlighting the battery life percentage, you can click on it, it'll bring down the control center, or you can slide the cursor two times on the right side corner. Force pressing can be done in many different ways, one of which is by simply holding down on a click, and it'll pop up. You may also right click on the icon with two fingers, and also bring up force press options. Then as you guess, in the control center, it's the exact same thing. By long pressing or right clicking, you'll get those force press options popping up. When scrolling, 
You may not only scroll with just two fingers, but if you're all the way at the very bottom, you could tap the top part of the screen. It'll quickly take you to the very top. Holding on the little scroll icon on the corner here will allow you to quickly scroll through the page. By pinching and zooming with two fingers, you may zoom in in images. And when watching a video, you could pinch and zoom to switch to full screen mode and, and you could pinch in to exit. If you want to remove the cursor entirely, you can simply tap on the screen, it'll disappear right away. When highlighting a document or a text, a double tap will highlight the single word. A triple tap will highlight the complete sentence or connected paragraph. Then when you highlight these things, you may also right click to get those additional options. And if we highlight this entire paragraph again, if you actually click and hold it, you can also rearrange it if you want to move a complete sentence or something. By moving the cursor directly below in the center, we'll bring up your dock toolbar apps. By locking our iPad, you could also unlock it with the trackpad by simply tapping on it once to wake up the screen, tap again for face ID to unlock and swipe up to take us in. Using three or four fingers, if we swipe to the left, we could actually go through previously open apps or we could slide right to go to the other previously open apps we have. So it's a no brainer with docs open, just like you could with the touchscreen, you could click and drag apps. You could move this little black center bar in the middle to change the ratio. And you could also activate slide over by click and dragging the app you want to open in the center bar. By having a cursor over the overlay app, if you use your three fingers, you could switch between those stacked apps. Sliding the cursor to the left or right side of the screen will close that mobile overlay. Then by sliding up with three fingers, we'll enter multitask and you can slide up to close that app as well. To close everything up, again, move the cursor to the edge, eliminate this little bar, make it full screen, and that's it. By going into settings, go into general, if you look into the trackpad section, here is not only where you can control the speed, you can change it to turtle or rabbit. Then natural scrolling is right here. This it's kind of hard to explain what basically this does is when this is disabled when you're scrolling down it feels like a desktop and when you enable this when you're scrolling it feels like a, a cell phone it's a personal preference but experiment with it and then underneath that you have tap to click with this disabled you need to physically click down on the trackpad to toggle the click so if we go back and enable this now the light is tap on the trackpad will toggle a click was two finger secondary click disabled. Now whenever you use two fingers, it's just gonna talk about click. So it's not gonna do the force press anymore. So you need to long press to force press. Again, all this, mainly personal preference. Now, still in the settings, but this time let's go to the accessibility. But go into pointer controls. If you have a hard time finding the cursor, you can also enable increased contrast. This will basically darken the circle so it stands out a little bit more. And then underneath that, you see automatic hide pointer. When this is disabled, the cursor will, will stay on as long as the trackpad is connected. Underneath that, there is the color section, which this will allow you to change the outline of the cursor to whatever color you like. You may also change how thick you want it to be as well. Back at this menu, you can also find the pointer size, which you could actually also increase the size of the cursor if you want to be this massive, if you're having a hard time finding it. Below that is the pointer animation. When you turn this off, you notice the cursor doesn't overlap or highlight certain icons like it is doing right now. So when it's turned off, it's just gonna retain the circle shape. Now, trackpad inertia, this is another personal preference of choice. Basically what this does, it think of it like momentum. As soon as you release your finger off the trackpad, it's gonna stop. But when you have it enabled, it's gonna still continue that momentum and still slide, kind of like a hockey puck. And right below here is where you could actually change the scrolling rate if you want it to be more aggressive. And then finally, by using just two fingers, no matter what page you're in, in the home menu, if you drag it down on a trackpad, it will bring down spotlight search right away. So two fingers, slide down, spotlight. There we have it folks. That is basically all the cool features, tips and tricks you could do when you have the trackpad paired on an iPad, running the latest firmware of iPad OS. If you'd like to see more of other accessories, go ahead and watch this video over here. So I pretty much show you everything you could do with the Apple Pencil. I give you a list of reasons why you may consider getting one in case you haven't yet. 
But not only that, I also show you its hidden features. And then that video over there, or that is a video that YouTube thinks that you will like. Feel free to watch either or. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.